Well, hi everybody, and uh, welcome to my shop. Uh, we're going to do something. Uh, although this radio is sitting in front of you, we're going to take a few moments to check my meters out, since uh, some questions have been raised about the input impedance uh, on my uh, on my digital meter. So um, I have a couple books here on meters. <laughs> I'm not going to suggest I read them. There's this one, Using Your Meter. VOM and DVM, and you can see from the pictures, this is not a particularly new book. And I have this book, How to Get the Most Out of Your VOM. This is an older book, it doesn't mention digital meters. Um, <coughs> again, I'm not going to tell you I read this book, maybe I should have. In the back is a section called The VOM as a Service Instrument, and I just was leafing through this, and this is a great book on how to check out radios for crying out loud. Hidden in the back of this book on voltmeters are all kinds of techniques here. And I'll tell you one I read. It's quite quite interesting. It's a quick way to check the B plus system in a radio. I'm not going to do this from now on too. Is uh, put your voltmeter on the uh, filter capacitor. Read the voltage. Let's say it's 150. Shut the set off. If the voltage drops very quickly it suggests there's no capacity left in your capacitor. You're probably hearing a hum too, which would also verify that. But the speed at which the voltage falls off suggests how poor the capacitor is. Secondly, if you do that test and you find the voltage doesn't come very high, maybe it goes halfway to its proper 150, maybe it goes to 75, then you shut the set off and it hangs on 75 and slowly drifts down. That's telling you the rectifier is probably bad not the uh, filter capacitor. So, yeah, very common sense tests. I, I just never thought of it myself. I never heard about it until just now. Although I've done very similar things and I'm sure everybody doing this work has done similar sorts of things. So, uh, great, great books here. Now, this book, this book has this line in it and this is what I've been reading all my life and this is what I'm going to try to prove to myself here. No, what happened? I lost it. Input impedance. Okay. First thing under digital voltmeter. DVMs have an input impedance of at least one mega ohm and more commonly 10 mega ohms. And this holds true on DC measurements and on AC measurements over the frequency range specified for the DVM. So that's what I always thought. It's exactly what I thought. It's at least a million and probably 10 million. Uh, when I researched my digital meter, which which has gone where? Where has it gone? My digital meter is hiding because he knows he's going to be put to the test shortly. Oh, I think it's in on my uh, my office desk actually. Um, I just always assumed it's a very high input impedance on those meters. Yeah, the older style where you're drawing current from the circuit to actually drive the meter movement, uh, obviously those have low input impedance. And uh, you have to be smart about this. There are good times to use low input impedance meters. There's, there's, there's an application for them. They're not bad. They just are what they are and you have to know what you're using. So high, impedance, high, imp high, impedance, high impedance meters, um, not a lot of brain power needs to be used because they don't affect the circuit that they're connected up to. Well, at least, uh, unless they're the very, very highest uh, impedance circuits. Okay, so the books say, my research on the internet say, everything says my DVM has a high input impedance and my experience also says that. But let's, let's find out for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, Use this guy and put a very high value resistor on there. I should get a one. I should get a 10 mega ohm resistor. Do I have a 10 mega ohm resistor? There's a two hundred K. Two point two, two point two mega ohms. That's the highest handy resistor I have. Two point two. 
not quite what I was looking for, but let's give it a try. Ten would be nicer. I have to hunt harder to find ten. I'm sure I've got one somewhere. But let's take this 2.2. 2.2 must be red, red, green. There's one there. There he is. 2.2. Now what I'm going to do is, very simple thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hook up a, uh, a low voltage through this, maybe 10, 15 volts, something like that. That wasn't the best move. Should disconnect it from what you've got it hooked on to <laughs> before you turn it on. Okay, I'm going to go like that, and very simply I'm going to read the voltage by putting my meter leads in series with that resistor. Now, where's my meter leads here? Do this with the DVM first, I'm sorry, we'll do this with the uh, VTVM, the vacuum tube meter, which we can all agree has a very high impedance. Okay. So, okay, so I think that's about, uh, it's about 15, 15 volts. And uh, can you see this meter go? Okay, it's going full scale. So let's put this down around 10. Okay, so I think that's 10. And it's coming up, it's reading 12, 12 on this meter. Now what about the far side of the resistor? And you see it's reading just below the 10. And here it's reading 12, just below the 10. Now, very, very, very high input impedance, it would still read 12, but it doesn't. So let's get out my, oh I gotta go get my other meter, hang on. Okay, here it is. So that's on the 20 scale. I like to use my uh, digital meter because, of course, it's more accurate. There's, there's no way I can rely 100% on this guy. He's pretty good, but he's not nearly as precise as the digital meter. So let's... Uh, let's get my act together here. <laughs> Okay, now the actual voltage coming from there is 10.6, and right on the far side, 5. So it's seeing about, it's kind of jumping around there a bit, isn't it? Why would it be doing that? I don't want it jumping around. So we're reading uh, 8.6 volts. And the actual supply voltage is 10.6. So we're losing 2 volts with that meter. Just going back to the other meter now. I've already forgotten the readings. <laughs> I'm getting lost in my leads here. Too many, too many leads. Where's the other? Oh, here it is. Okay, see so that? That's reading 12. That's way off from the digital meter. And on the other side, it's reading, uh, well, about 2 volts less. So you know what? They're both exhibiting a similar input impedance. That's what I would say. I wouldn't say it's much different, so 
Now, in terms of accuracy, there's a calibration screw. I've never ever calibrated these meters because, again, I don't rely on them for precision. So I, I never bothered to calibrate them. Why don't we do that? So uh, uh, relying on my digital meter as the reliable Take a very good reading. 10.6 is what's coming out of my power supply. Very close to what the power supply dial meter is actually saying. So 10.6. That's what we want this meter to read. Oh, so it's, it's reading 10. So it's a little low. 10.6, the zero is up just a wee bit. Okay, we'll zero that. Put this on. 10.6. Okay, so the two readings I get with the DVM are 10.6 and 8.6. 10.6 and 8.6. With the other meter, the digital meter, I get 10.6, 8.6, exactly the same. So these both these meters have exactly the same input impedance, <laughs> which could be m more misleading than helpful. Now let's think about it, what we got here. My pencil out, piece of paper. So we've got a 2.2 mega ohm a resistor. So we're supplying things with roughly 10 volts. Oh, this is easy. And we're finding. Well, I think I think the answer is it's a 10 mega ohm input impedance. I think that's what that means. If we're supplying 10 10 volts, this is no use showing you that. If we're supplying 10 volts and two of them are dropping over a 2 mega ohm resistor and the other eight are showing up across the other thing, I think that pretty much says. 10 mega ohm input impedance for both this meter and for our VTVM. So I, I'm quite, I feel pretty good now that the uh, VTV, uh, my uh, digital meter is a high impedance input. I always thought these meters had things like FET transform, uh, transistors on the front end and they're actually, uh, it's easy to damage them. That's what I always thought. So, there you go. I think I'll post this up just as a separate uh, video. And uh, you know, I got another meter here. Well, you know, we won't take a look at this today. I, the reason I don't use this meter is it's just terribly inaccurate, and I just don't need it. So it's just sitting here, looking nice but doing nothing. Um, it works, but it was way off in terms of accuracy. So, so uh, that is it for a meter check.